the plan, project management secretariat that's responsible for oversight, coordination and monitoring of the plan. Our third recommendation is closely related to this and public participation. And while we welcome the establishment of the National Water Forum, of which I'm, I'm very happy to be a member, and the work of community water officers, and while we welcome the commitment to develop 46 catchment plans, the River Basin Management Plan doesn't have a commitment that the public will be involved in their development. And volunteer-run catchment groups such as Rivers Trust just aren't resourced in the way that they need to be if they're to play the vital role that the state envisages for them. And so we are recommending that the public must be involved in the development of plans for the 46 catchments around the country and that they need to be resourced adequately to do that in order to secure effective public engagement. And this needs to be facilitated by a team of 46 catchment water officers as opposed to the 13 we have now. <clears throat> As we all know, agriculture is the most significant impact on our waters. But since colleagues from Atashke will be dealing specifically with that, I'm not going to speak any more about that. And I'm going to move on to urban wastewater. The draft plan is far, far too weak on the very significant impact that urban wastewater discharges are having on the environment. This is the main source of pollution in 208 water bodies. And yet the proposed plan does not set out measures to fix, the, fix these by the deadline. So we're recommending that Irish Water's capital investment plan must have specific works and actions to address pollution in those 208 water bodies polluted by sewerage. And it also needs to transparently set out where this wastewater pollution is happening, the wastewater plant or system that's causing it, and where there is, and critically, where there is not a plan of action to address this and the timelines. The second last issue I'd like to draw your attention to is forestry. Again, there are no new measures or targeted or otherwise in this plan to address forestry impacts, despite the fact that forestry is causing pollution in 233 water bodies, including many of those pristine water bodies that we spoke of earlier. Instead, the plan relies on just the rollout and uptake of current initiatives, such as the licensing system, with no link made to how that's going to restore those degraded waters. And also the additional risk posed by increased national climate change forestry targets is not addressed in the plan. So we're recommending that all forestry operations must be subject to a water framework directive specific assessment. That mu and these must contain site specific stipulations for water protection, taking into account the cumulative impacts of multiple plantations in a catchment. And we also need sensitivity mapping to identify the most vulnerable catchments so that as forestry is rolled out in the coming years, we ensure that only the right tree is planted in the right place. Finally, then, I want to mention physical modifications to our waters. These pose the second biggest pressure to our inland waterways. And channelization has the most impact due to the significant disturbance caused by in-stream in dredging and clearance activities. And this includes siltation, disturbance of spawning beds, changes in water quality, and disconnecting rivers from their floodplains and wetlands. This is in clear contravention of the Water Framework Directive, which mandated that we should have had regulations in place since 2012 for these activities. And therefore, we welcome the proposal in the plan that there will be new legislation and new water and planning guidelines. We're recommending that with all due regard to community safety, of course, this new legislation must include water framework directive specific assessment in advance of these works and interventions such as dredging, drainage and flood protection. And these projects must achieve water framework directive compliance. And there needs to be an urgent assessment of catchment scale soft options, which maximizes upstream attenuation as part of sustainable flood management. And we're also calling for a prohibition on wetland drainage and a commitment to a river a nation, nationwide river and wetland restoration programme. So in conclusion then, I'd just like to thank you for your attention. And we hope the committee may wish to play a central role in securing a stronger and more ambitious plan that reverses pollution and ensures the security of clean and safe water for people, nature and the economy in these deeply uncertain times. Thank you, Chair.